Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to be talking about speeding up your animation without using keyframes and using scripts. This clock was made using the time script, which takes less time to make than it does to watch. So suck on that, keyframes. Okay. So the tutorial will last longer than 12 seconds because if I rush through it, you'll probably miss some of the nuances of scripting because it can get pretty complicated. But you know what? I'll slow it down just for you. Yes, you, because you're special. Let's make a new composition of whatever size and whatever length, I don't really care. And we'll make a new text layer. And, you know, really you can type in whatever you want. Because what we're going to be doing is using a script to redefine what the text is actually displaying. And that is here in the source text. So hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch. And then type in lowercase t-i-m-e. And you can click somewhere else or you can hit the enter key on the number pad and now it's going to display in the text field what the time script actually outputs so as you can see it outputs a long string of constantly changing numbers and that's because what it's telling you is right now the time of this comp is one second point four one six repeating and it goes by seconds not by frames and so if we go here to one second it says one and that's pretty much it. That's what the time script will return to you. Now what we can use this for is to use it in combination with other expressions to power motion, to power text output, like we did here in the original. This is telling us we're at 4.61 seconds. If we want to create something like that, we would need the text to output a round number. So we would say capital M-A-T-H dot R-O-U-N-D and then put the word time here in brackets and that will cause it to round the time to a round number. I mean that's not exactly what we wanted, right? We wanted a couple of decimal points which is actually a little bit more complicated. So let me show you the whole thing of it. It's a little bit complicated and we start using variables but it is all still based around this time principle. So basically we're telling it we're gonna have two variables. One of them is n, one of them is d and if you've ever worked with variables in other programming languages, then you'll know what I'm on about here. So we're saying n equals time, and then close that off, and d equals, in this case, 100, because we want two decimal points. Okay. And then we're saying we're going to take round off n times d, so the time times 100, and then divide all of that by 100. Basically, we're saying take the time times it by 100 to make 413 in this on this frame and then divide that by 100 so simple enough you're just adding two decimal points after you've already put them back in so hopefully that makes a bit of sense to you guys and if not it's all in the project file that I'm gonna put a link to so you can just copy and paste my script and you know go about your life but if you want more decimal points tag on a couple more zeros whatever and this is really just increasing these variables Using variables and placeholders and scripts is going to save you a lot of time if you put in the time to know things about them. So that's using the time script to create some kind of a text thing. You can use that to make countdown clocks, counting up clocks. If you're timing something, throw one of these bad boys on. But that's generally how we made the text part. Now, using time to interact with motion is something else entirely. So let me just... Uh, set up some things here. Let me just go really fast. So now we have a thing that we can animate. Let's um, let's go ahead and we're going to animate its rotation because if we're making a clock we want this to kind of go around. Basically we want to tell the rotation rotation you're going to be operated by the time now. But here at one second the output is one but that means that it's only moved one degree. If we want this to be a second hand, let's say, we would say after one second you've gone a full 360 around. So, wee, Kind of like that. So, now we've got, you know, pretty good second hand as it clicks around, or however you want to do that. If you wanted to have two hands, let's go ahead and, and duplicate this layer, alright. Pull up its properties. If you ever want to pull up the properties, select the layer and hit U. That'll bring up all the keyframes and stuff hit you twice and you'll bring up everything you've changed, keyframes, scripts, whatever. So the difference between seconds and minutes is that for every one rotation around, 
of this hand, we want this one to move 10 degrees, I think. I feel that's what it is. Let's see how that looks. So I guess when we reach 6 o'clock, bam. So that's how that is. So basically, you know, for your minute hand, time times 30, second hand, time times 360. So look at that. We have a pretty lame looking clock. Or minimalist, is what I would say. I'd tell someone that instead of being a crappy clock, it's a minimalist clock. I'm comfortable with that. But that's generally about it. You can do a lot of things with the time. For example, you'll notice in the uh, in the original here, as we go along, I'm actually using quite a number of expressions. I'm using the wiggle modified by time, time, in that to cause it to jostle around more as we move along. So the longer we go in the comp, the more erratic the movement is going to be. Also, I've got the time operating on the blurriness of it. So as we move along to higher time values, we're getting higher blur values. So you can use this to procedurally do things that you might not want to keyframe. I think there's only one set of keyframes, and it's here for the title. And I could have done that with the time script, but I just didn't feel like it. Basically, all you need to know is that typing in time will return the second value that's in seconds, as in seconds and minutes, of the comp that you've typed that into. So, like here, if I grab this layer and start moving it around, you'll notice the value doesn't change no matter where I slide it, because that point in time is always 0.4167, no matter where the layer is in relation to that, because it's based off the time value of the comp. Now, what you do with the time value is really up to you. This is a fairly complicated equation, but you could just do something. Let's say I wanted this to rotate, but didn't really care about its accuracy depending on time. I just want it to go faster. You know, I could just say times a thousand and let it whip around like crazy with no semblance of a rhyme or reason about it. I could also do something like this where I say, you know, I want it to start at to a different position. Like I'd rather it started here. So I add a hundred to the value. Or I want variable control, so I type in the word value plus time, which means I'll be adding whatever value I select in here to the time value. So that's how that goes. Um, these are just a bunch of cool things. Um, just remember that if you want to save time, especially in instances where if I wanted to change this from being a 15 second clip to being a 30 second clip, I just extend it and then the time value continues chugging along without me having to move any keyframes at all. So you might think you're being a bit lazy, but you're actually being incredibly smart. So remember that next time you think I'm being lazy, that I'm actually really smart and a bit of a pompous a-hole. So I'm Evan Abrams. Um, thanks for watching this uh, quick tip about uh, scripts. Um, check me out at evanabrams.com. Subscribe to this channel if you want more terrible tutorials like this. I'm going to put the project file up. Someone asked me to post the project file last time, so I'm going to give a go at seeing how well that goes. If that's a thing you like, let me know in the comments and I'll keep doing it. And uh, yeah, just let me know what kind of tutorials you guys are looking to learn about. I'm not, I'm not overly sure. I know this helped me out a lot back in the day, so maybe it helps you out a lot. But uh, I'd love to see what you make with it, and uh, have a great day. See you around the internet.